Okay, everybody, welcome to the Institute. Today we're going to look at converging lenses and diverging lenses. So just like I mentioned with curved mirrors, we had concave mirrors and convex mirrors. They can produce images using the concept of reflection. Um, what you can do is with a lens, you can actually use the concept of refraction, the bending of a wave as it goes from one material to the other. Now, one of the key things that's going to happen, however, is I have some converging lenses here. I'm going to start with the ones on top. Basically, these are sometimes referred to as double convex lenses because the idea is if I look at this, it's kind of curved in this fashion here and it's kind of curved in that fashion here. And one of the key parts of it, I'm going to see if I can put a ruler on here to kind of explain, is we draw a line right down through the center of this lens. And we kind of look at everything that's happening around this. This is kind of the the center of the lens, even though technically a refraction is going to happen at this interface and at this interface, we really look at everything kind of going from the center of the lens. It just makes it a little bit easier. The cool part is ray tracing for this stuff is exactly the same as it was when we were doing this for um, our curved mirrors. So if this is my object over here, and I am trying to figure out where the image is, with a double convex lens or a converging lens, um, we're going to have a focal point. But if you notice, I have two focal points. I have a focal point over here and a focal point over here. Because the light is actually going to pass through, we actually have focal points on both sides. We actually, for a diverging lens, which is sometimes referred to as a double concave lens, because if you notice, it kind of curves like this. And then it kind of curves like that. So we can kind of say it's two concave lenses um, also do the exact same thing. They have a focal point on both sides. So with a converging lens, what we notice is if light leaves the tip of this, and we're going to kind of do the same thing. We're going to put it at this axis of symmetry because that's basically the light would go straight through. So it'll just be one part. That light coming in parallel to this axis of symmetry, so the light coming in here, this is number one, um, it, when it hits this mirror, it's going, or this lens, sorry, lens, not mirror, it's going to actually get refracted and it always gets refracted through the focal point, like so. And then another possibility is it can go from the tip of here, it can go through the focal point. And when you do that, you always do it through, you try to do it through the focal point on the same side of the converging lens as the object. Um, you're going to see something a little bit later that this doesn't have to be this way, but it's normally this way. And then it will come off parallel like so. And then the third part is we don't really have a center to this, but we kind of do. And one of the other key parts is the center of the lens here. So if you notice, I have this kind of line that goes down through the center of the lens, like so. Um, so if I have a ray of light that comes off the top of this, and this is number three, and it goes through the center of this lens. It will technically get refracted at each one of these points, but it will refract in such a way that it'll just keep going straight through. So that's actually a very neat one. If you notice down here with a diverging lens, it actually does the exact same thing with a diverging lens. If it goes into that point that's right there, it'll just travel right through. And so that's a very useful line. So the idea, let's say this, I'm going to go back to this first picture here, and here's my object. I'm going to follow a couple more of these. So I've got this first one, this light comes in parallel, and then it goes through the focal point, like so. Let's have one go through the focal point, and I'm not actually using a, a, a straight edge here, but I normally would going to strike here. We always tend to go to the center of this lens and then that one would come off parallel, something like this, and they would kind of cross there. And then my third possibility is it would go from this tip of this object here and it's going to go through straight through the center of this object, this lens. So this one I'm going to try to get a nice little straight edge here and it kind of crosses right here. So because I'm not being perfectly straight with these, they don't all work, but they actually kind of cross right about there. So what you find is with a converging lens, the type of image you will create will tend to be, 
So this would be my image. One possibility is it would be an inverted image. So this is inverted. It's a real image because the light is really going there. So it's real. And then you have to kind of compare the sizes. We're going to talk about this later when we talk about the thin lens equation. It'll actually allow us to relate all the sizes here. For this one, it's hard to kind of see whether it's larger or smaller. It looks like it might be slightly larger. I'm going to kind of assume that. It's kind of hard to say. As this object changes on a converging lens, so if I get this object in closer, so if it was somewhere inside of this, you're going to get a different situation. If it's farther away, if it was way over here, you're going to get a different situation. So converging lenses produce all kinds of neat little images that we'll look at um, with our little Google form coming up. A diverging lens down here, however, is a little bit different. One of the things is, if you notice in step number one, we have light coming in parallel but it's not actually going to go through the focal point because this one is converging it through the focal point. So it's trying to converge all the light coming in. Actually, if you had a whole bunch of rays of light coming into this lens, what they would do is they would all converge through this focal point. That's what the, the, the term converging means. Whereas diverging means that all these rays of light would actually diverge away from the focal point on the same side. So what this one does is the ray of light actually moves away from this focal point. So you imagine that there's a focal point and then this is the way the, the light would actually go. And then our second situation, number two, rather than actually having it go through the focal point on the same side, you have it try to go through the focal point on the opposite side. So if I were to draw this line and just continue it through, it would hit that focal point. But when it comes to the center of this lens, it gets refracted. Technically, it gets refracted at the front and edge. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to go to the center. And then it would come off parallel to this axis of symmetry. And then the third one is still the same as with a converging line, which is kind of neat. So let's say I start off with this object over here. I'm going to see what kind of image I would create. So I've already drawn one of those. Let's go to the second one. So I'm going to kind of see if I can draw a line that appears to go from the tip of that object, and it would try to go to this focal point. So it's going to go here. If I were to continue it, it would go through this focal point over here. But once it gets to this part, then it's going to come off parallel to that axis of symmetry. So I'm going to see if I can slide my ruler up. It's one of those places where I wish I had my Promethean board because I think it's much easier with my Promethean board here. And it would get a ray of light kind of like this. So this is kind of like number two over here. Now, obviously, this ray of light up here and this ray of light right here are diverging. They are not going to ever cross. So we're not going to create an image over here. So instead, what we have to do is draw those lines back. So this first one up here, this is number one. If I were to draw it back... It wants to go through this focal point, so these little dotted lines here. Now, just to help you out a little bit, I'm going to erase these lines over here. This little dotted line was so we could figure out where the original line was coming, but that's not what I'm going to use. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number two that's parallel to my axis of symmetry, and I'm going to bring that one backwards. Whoops. Let's undo those two things I did. Now let's go back to my pen. So I'm going to draw this one. Let's actually switch the color. I'm going to make this pink so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to have it come backwards, back, 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 like that. And if you notice, they cross right about here, just a little bit in front of that focal point. So that's where the tip of the arrow would be. And so this is where our image would be. Notice that this image is right side up. It is smaller. And your first instinct is, is it is it real or virtual? Well, up here, the reason why I refer to this one as real is the rays of light actually crossed here. Notice I'm using dotted lines. Those are not the actual rays of light. These are the, the actual rays of light. This is number one, and this is the actual number two here. Um, so these are not, so this would be another virtual 
image. And so what happens is with a diverging lens, you would wanna actually be looking at it from this side. So your eyeball would be somewhere over here, kind of viewing it and you would see a smaller image than the actual object. You would actually do the same thing with this one. You'd want your eyeball over here so that you could actually view what's going on. And here you would actually see an image, but it would be kind of neat. It would appear like it's in front of that. Um, you can also go to other places and kind of view it and, and actually creating those real images is really kind of neat. So this is a little bit about ray tracing for converging and diverging lenses. It's very similar to our ray tracing for mirrors. And then what I'm gonna do in the Google form that's gonna go with this is I wanna look at some examples of this. What kind of examples do I actually see converging and diverging lenses pop up? Hope you enjoyed this edition of the Institute.